Welcome back to another video and today we'll talk about how to prepare for the PWPT or Practical Web Penetration Tester exam. I'm going to do my best to not spoil the entire thing but give you some insights into how best to prepare and approach the exam. If you're thinking about taking it on or you're just curious to find out some ways to approach it then this is the video for you and of course if you have questions you can either leave them down in the comments below or swing by one of our weekly live Live streams. As cyber threats grow, so does the need for skilled professionals. TCM security certifications are here to elevate your skills to meet these challenges. Our courses are tailored to give you an edge with practical scenario-based exams. Step into the world of advanced cybersecurity at certifications.tcm-sec.com and make your mark. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So similar to other TCM exams, you'll have a number of days to carry out a pen test on a target and then extra time to write a report. For the PWPT though, there's no debrief. So as usual, you'll log into the platform, you'll be given a VPN file to connect to the environment and then begin your pen test. And remember that the emphasis on the exam is to treat this like a pen test. It's going to require you to work through the target methodically and your report should include low, medium and high findings. You shouldn't skip out and just report the things that you think are high impact. But let's talk about the prerequisite knowledge. So first up, everything you need to know in the course is in the TCM courses, practical API hacking and practical web hacking. If you go through these and complete the exercises, take notes and absorb the material, then you're going to be well prepared to to take on the exam. I've built the exam box not to catch you out, but to mimic real world issues that I've found during pen tests that were overlooked by scanners and would require knowledge of the vulnerability and a solid testing methodology and troubleshooting skills to find. Throughout the courses, I talk about trying to understand the application behavior and how it responds to our input. And whenever you're testing a part of the application, think about what the intention of the functionality is and try to consider what vulnerabilities might be relevant and edge cases that might exist. I also want to emphasize that here, knowledge of modern web applications and technologies is definitely something to strive towards. The PWPT won't be an old PHP app vulnerable to to null byte injection. Therefore, knowing about things like routing and templating engines and APIs is definitely going to help you out. A lot of this is covered in the course material, but of course, if you've never built a small modern web app before, then I recommend spending an hour creating something in Flask or a small API driven application using Node and Express. And it's really going to help you grasp the fundamentals of how modern web applications behave. Now let's talk about the path to PWPT and what we can do along the way to maximize our chances of success. First up, if you're new to web app pen testing or bug bounty or AppSec, then aiming for PJWT based around the practical bug bounty course is a good place to start. The exam follows a very simple similar format, but by no means is a requirement for PWPT. So if that's what you're after, then skip that and dive straight in. Next, we really need to get comfortable with HTTP and understanding different headers, content types, and also common authentication and authorization mechanisms, including things like JSON web tokens, session tokens, etc., etc. Luckily to get a lot of this insight, all we need to do is follow the courses and take good notes and absorb the exam material, but make sure to pay special attention to requests and responses and Google anything that you see that you don't understand at first sight. You need to continue to build that foundation of knowledge. We also need to know about common security controls like input filtering and be able to test these controls to make sure that they're effective or find any weaknesses. And finally, putting together a game plan for your exam. It's all well and good having detailed notes, but if you have to spend a lot of time rereading those notes or trawling through them and then creating tests and then double checking them and then going off on tangents and making sure that you didn't miss anything, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. So personally, I have checklists for different technologies like JWTs, as well as different vulnerabilities like injection attacks or XXE or race conditions. So that when I see a search box, I think, okay, my input is probably used to query the database. So I need to test for SQL or NoSQL injection. 
happened. My input is also reflected back to me on the page, so I need to test for cross-site scripting. And if the application is using a templating engine, then I would need to think about template injection too. For all of these attacks, I have checklists and payloads that I can use to get started with. And given the extra context that I will have gathered from testing the application, I can add or remove checks as I go. At the very least, it's going to help me identify which word lists I might want to use for fuzzing just to get started, or it's going to help me uncover and exploit full on vulnerabilities. Once you have the fundamentals down, start to think about the impact of attacks. And what I mean by this is really thinking about how your payload is impacting the application, its users, and the administrators. And this has two major benefits. First, it helps us correctly assess if the vulnerability is actually a major issue or just a minor bug. And second, it will help you identify the potential for chaining vulnerabilities together to achieve a larger goal. So whenever you find something, even if it's just quirky behavior, think to yourself, so what? What does this really mean? What does this enable me to do? Next, we want to get into the habit of verifying our findings and documenting proof of concepts. Your POC doesn't necessarily need to be something like a standalone script that goes from nothing to rooting the box, but putting together simple instructions that other engineers can easily follow is going to be ideal and it's going to be useful as notes for you in the future when you come across a similar issue. Finally, make sure that you have your environment prepped and ready to go. And that means having Burp Suite configured how you like it with the extensions that you want to use already installed, word lists and payloads ready to go, or at the very least bookmarked so that they are easily accessible. Now, if you feel like you need some extra practice before taking the exam, or you just want to sharpen your skills in your spare time, then I recommend you try the practitioner level mystery labs on Portsvigar. Also revisiting challenges from the course material is a great way to practice. There will likely be small details or alternative payloads to uncover. You're focusing on attacking a particular piece of functionality and this can help us tune into what attacks to use and when. Now to wrap up, I have some exam tips that I wanted to share and some of these are generic advice for any practical exam, but still really, really important. So first up, we have taking regular breaks. Even during my daily work, every time I take a break, make a cup of tea or step away from my desk for a minute, when I return, I pretty much solve the problem that I was stuck on or make some kind of meaningful progress. Second, as you test functionality, create a to-do list of tests and edge cases as they come up into your head and then come back to them. The reason I say this is that it's easy to test something and then come up with an idea and then go off on a tangent and test that idea before you've fully exhausted the tests that you were already doing. And if we revisit my search bar example from earlier, where we had the potential for injection into the database, cross-site scripting, and template injection. If we were testing exercise and then suddenly thought, ah, maybe template injection, and started to do that before we'd even completed our XSS testing, we might be overlooking a vulnerability and it would go undiscovered. Or at the very least, we would have to come back to it later on and waste time retesting or trying to figure out what we already covered and what we didn't. And my last tip is to take your time. We've created the exam sandbox so that you have time to complete it and you'll likely run out of ideas before you run out of time itself. Therefore, you have the time to take good notes to make sure that you test thoroughly and if you finish testing everything and feel like you've missed something, there will be time to go back and reassess anything that you want to check over once again. Nothing in the exam is designed to trick you. It's designed to show you that you can find and exploit real world issues. And that's it for this video. I hope it helps you on your journey to PWPT. And if you have any questions, then once again, let us know down in the comments below or swing by one of our weekly live streams and I will catch you next time.